So in this video, we're going to show you the amount of your taxpayer dollars given as foreign aid to terrorist controlled countries. Then we'll look at how that impacts lower income Americans. And finally, what we can do to stop the insanity. Please remember to click like and post a comment. Companies like Facebook will push this video into people's feeds as a recommendation if you click the like and post a comment. That means we can get the word out in a bigger way. So please help us help you. Okay, so this week the U.S. announced it was providing Syria with an additional $808 million in emergency relief to provide citizens in the Middle Eastern country with food, health care, shelter, and other services. Now, when you see the folks that need help, naturally your heart goes out to them. Here's the problem. For four decades, Syria has been on the State Department's list of nations that sponsor terrorism. The United States Agency for International Development, who has a $40 billion budget to aid Syria and others, lacks the ability to track whether that aid reaches the intended target. In fact, for the last seven years, the Office of the Inspector General has conducted a number of probes into our aid to Syria, and they've warned of fraud and corruption. Some of what they cite includes bid rigging, bribery, collusion, kickbacks, and product substitution across dozens of suppliers. Yet, even with that warning, we continue to pour money into countries like Syria. So how does this impact Americans, especially lower income Americans? Here's some math. In this chart, you'll see that the hourly earnings average is $11 per hour across the nation. The link to this is in the description. That category is largely comprised of younger folks and families that need a second income to make ends meet. Looking at it on a monthly basis, they gross $1,760 per month, which means they fall into the 11% federal tax bracket and pay $193.60 per month to Uncle Sam. When you look at the $40 billion in annual foreign aid and divide it by the 144 million taxpayers in this country, it comes out to $278 per person. This means that over 100% of tax dollars from low income Americans go to foreign aid that's being used and abused according to the Inspector General. When we did further calculation, we estimated that if we eliminated this arm of the federal government, anyone making $2,300 per month or lower would not have to pay any federal tax and would give them an opportunity to help keep up with the ridiculous rate of inflation that we're facing. Now, is this going to happen? Of course not. It's just where my brain went when I read an article in Judicial Watch on the topic of aid to Syria. So what can we do, we the people? First, let me point out that this falls into one of three buckets that serve as a framework for returning sanity to this country. That bucket is a balanced budget, which is one of three amendments that are being seriously considered at the state level throughout the country. You see, our Constitution allows states to make amendments, and there isn't a darn thing the federal government can do about it other than to work with folks like George Soros to spread propaganda. Right now, we have more than half of the required states on board, and the movement is growing dramatically. Why is it growing dramatically? because during the last two years, citizens have been jolted into the reality that we are losing our freedoms through manipulation. So is that why the states are getting on board? You bet it is. It's because of everyday people like you and me that are bringing this to their local legislators. Let me prove it. My family was always willing to shed blood for our inalienable rights, not for a bureaucracy to take them away with a stroke of a pen. They fought for the right to self-govern, to earn our own way. Many Marylanders are in the movement to preserve our freedoms and to use Article 5 of our Constitution. We want to know whether you are willing to stand with us. We do not want you to sacrifice our state or our rights and hand over your power to some crazy agenda in Washington, D.C. We once united against the British in the Revolutionary War. We were united in calling the late federal convention. We need to unite again. You know who I got vote yes emails from? Joe Klein in White, Caleb Crevier in Elkton, 
Darren Neiman in Clear Lake and Levi Smith in Brookings. The people who want us to pass this are South Dakotans and they're from our districts. I'm asking you to stand with me today. Let's vote this thing through and send it over to the Senate with a strong message. It's time to do something. Thank you. We at the Patriot Think Tank watch a lot of state proceedings and the message is the same everywhere. The voice of the people is being heard and when it gets loud enough, it's undeniable. Join us today and help raise the volume. Do not die a silent and timid death. Go to our various platforms or our website and learn more about amending our Constitution through Article 5, an article unanimously incorporated into our Constitution by our founding fathers who knew that one day this would be needed. Today's that day. Don't forget, comment and like. Bye for now.